On the phone, we have a gentleman who played at my favorite college, University of Notre Dame, back in the 60s. He also played with the Raiders back when Al Davis was leading the team. I mean, he was just a prolific passer. He had some good receivers, too, but I think he made his receivers a little better. And uh, Fred Blitnikoff, Daryl and Monica, how are you doing today, Daryl? Just fine, David. So how did you end up going to Notre Dame? Well, uh, I, I was born and raised here in Fresno, California. I went to Clovis High School. And actually, um, I had had it down between Notre Dame and uh, Southern California. And decided to go back, and I looked at the campus, and once I saw the campus, and uh, I knew that's where I wanted to go, and uh, that's how I got there. It wasn't the weather in the South Bend that drew you there? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. After visiting the campus and, and, and looking at all the facilities and everything, and uh, look at their football reputation, I knew uh, maybe I could uh, contribute a little bit. My grandmother still laughs to this day. She goes, the only mistake Notre Dame ever made was letting women in. Did them being just a, <laughs> <laughs> was them not having any women there on campus, was that helpful in your decision or did that kind of hurt where you thought maybe I should go to Southern Cal? No, I, you know, I, I, I guess it affects a lot of people's decision. But once uh, once I was back, I, I, I liked uh, the facilities. I liked everything about it. Uh, um that was into my uh, final decision, anyway, of going to Notre Dame. But uh, um, I'm sure it's changed, though, now that, uh, you know, you have women on campus and stuff. Uh, but uh, it was um, a special um, time for me and in my life. And so it was, you know, being away from home, um, I enjoyed it. I really, really did. So. What was Coach Kuharik like to play for? I, he was tough. I, I'd seen him uh, in the professional ranks. Um, you know, I felt we would have audibles and have a little more leeway from the quarterbacking aspect. Uh, but he believed very strongly that the play you called the hell would go regardless of the defense. Um, I had a high school coach that had audibles in high school, so we were we could, you know, audibleize out. And the play that we were in, call a new play, but uh, we didn't have that, and that hurt us at times. And um, actually, Don Dahl, a backfield coach, uh, we put in audibles, uh, and I threw four touchdown passes against Pittsburgh in a game, and most of them were all in audibles. Uh, and we were in practice; and it was snowing, and the last play of the practice, the defense. Uh, if they beat the offense, then the offense had to run laps and vice versa. And uh, Coach Carey could call a, a sweep. Well, they brought 11 guys up on the line of scrimmage and out of the, 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 the run to a pass, and the defense had to run laps. And I got grounded and didn't get to play that week because uh, we, we had audibles in. So, you know, that hurt me. But I had such a love for the game, we we, we needed it. So... Um, it, it was tough uh, not having the freedom to, to, to be able to, to change places at the line of scrimmage. Was your best game in college not an actual game uh, that meant anything? Was that East-West Shrine game when you had those 349 yards passing? Well, what, what I always thought that, that you know, we, we, we had some great athletes at Notre Dame. I played at Nick Bonacani, and they got a lot of guys that went on to play pro and stuff. And um, I know I can remember when uh, Eric Pasekin called me, he said, yeah, I want you to be my starting quarterback for the for the East team. And he used to wish right game. I said, sure, coach, if you think I'm good enough. And he said, no, you're good enough. And I can remember going out and sitting down with him, getting her uh, playbook, and looking at the offense and the plays, and uh, I went back to my room and drew it all up and came back, and we we got down in distance and in game situations, and he walked me through that and uh, made it really easy for easy for me. And you know, I played with some pretty good athletes that day, and we we opened it up. And um, after that game, I uh, really felt in my own heart and mind that. Maybe I could play at the next level, and because uh, you you know you never knew because 
we didn't have more than a 5-5 winning season at Notre Dame while I played there, but uh, we were competitive. We had some good athletes, and uh, I really didn't know whether I had the talent to, to, to go on because I never really was able to showcase that. Uh, and I found out that, yeah, yes, I could play at the next level. So you get drafted by the Bills in the 24th round, the Packers in the 12th round. Why did you decide to sign with the Bills? Well, uh, that's a good question. I had, uh, Beth Lombardi asked me that same question uh, at, a, at a, a dinner. And I said, well, Coach, that, uh, your scout had called me, said you, you, that you drafted me number 12 and that you'd be back with me in, in, in a few days and stuff. And, and then John Mazur from the Bills was calling me almost daily, wanting me to sign. I said several weeks went by. And I was getting ready to go out and play in the East-West Rank game, and uh, no one had contacted me from uh, uh, Green Bay. So I just assumed that maybe he didn't want me, so I signed with the Bills. And uh, he says, I knew it. He says, you know, Bart got hurt this year, and uh, you would have been my starting quarterback. And that was probably one of the the best compliments that a coach ever gave me. Uh, because uh, Vince Lombardi thought maybe I had enough talent to, to have been able to play for him. So, um, yeah, that was it, it was tough. But as it worked out for me, it was a good thing because I got a chance to go to the Bills uh, in four years. We won a couple of AFC titles there, and I got in a position where I was getting ready to maybe have a chance to be the starting quarterback there. And I was traded to the Raiders' um uh, uh, for Art, uh, Art, uh, Art Powell and uh, Tom Flores. So those are two pretty good players. Yeah, so it was it was really a, a, a shock. Uh, David, I, I had talked to Ralph Wilson Jr. and Sr. the night before I was traded, and they were all excited I was going to come back and be uh, their starting quarterback, and eight hours later I was traded. And, and it was kind of a shock, but... Uh, as it turned out, uh, Al Davis called me and, and I went up and met him and, and John Roush and the Raider coaching staff uh, the next day and uh, gives me an opportunity because of being born and raised out here in California, give me a chance and my family to be able to come up uh, to the Raider games and, and watch me play. So it worked out well for me, David. Did Jack Kemp help you at all uh, progress as a quarterback with the Bills? Uh, Jack, Jack, and I were, you know, we're, we're, we're great competitors. So we had a lot of respect for one another. Uh, if Jack got in trouble, then I was able to, c- to come off the bench, and I just it was in the process of learning. I really think uh, at any level, even in today's game, that it takes a quarterback uh, at least three uh, to four years before before you learn enough that you can be a starter and know all the defenses and know what to do in the, in the various situations that you get yourself into but um it uh we had a good rapport we won we won championships and uh, i was i was really lucky david 11 out of 12 years that i played pro ball i was in uh, playoffs championships or super bowl so um you know i played with some pretty good uh, athletes and some pretty good coaching staffs so if Jack Kemp would have been president of the United States, would you have been his vice president? And if he got in trouble, you could have came in and helped him out? <laughs> Man, I don't think I would have quite uh, have gone that far. But uh had a lot, of, a lot of respect for Jack. Knew he, he was into politics and supported him uh, all we could uh, when he did get in. So when you got traded to the Raiders, did you think, okay, this is going to be great because they're known for liking to throw the ball and it'll be a wide-open offense for me? Well, uh, I, I like the Raiders. I, I, I like their style. Um, Al Davis likes uh, to put the ball down the field. Um, and But, you know, I was so fortunate that we had uh, really a great team, uh, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. That's what made us great. And Blitnikoff and Warren Wells were just outstanding uh, re- receivers. And, uh, you know, I had some pretty good uh, fullbacks, uh, Hewitt Dixon and uh, Marv Hubbard uh, were the best. And Charlie Smith was one of the, uh, had great speed, uh, was a great receiver coming out of the backfield. So he opened up uh, a, a lot of new things for us. And 
had good tight ends like Raymond Chester, and, and uh, so we could do a lot by 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 spreading the field out wide. The field's 53 and a third yard wide, and we use a lot of uh, spread formation. We spread the defense out and try to get a one-on-one situation. Um, so the Raiders' system fit me like a glove because I like to throw the ball deep, and uh, we were able to score uh, pretty much uh, at will. So you're in Super Bowl two against the Packers. Were you thinking, you know what, that could be me behind center for the Packers if things would have been a little differently? Well, yeah, I, you know, because, you know, I I would have really liked the opportunity to play under, under Vince Lombardi, so there's no doubt about that. And, of course, uh, I know Bart Starr well and got a lot, a lot of respect for him and, and probably would have been an understudy uh, to him and, and stuff. But the Green Bay Packers, had a lot of great athletes on their team, and, and you know they they were a powerhouse for a lot of years. But you know I think that um, uh, I can remember Jerry Kramer saying, you know, we played him in the Super Bowl, and he says, there he says you didn't have much of a chance. He says uh, they they called him the old man. He said the old man told us told us right before the game started that this was his last time that he had ever coached. And he said, I want you to go out there and win one for the Gipper. And uh, he says, that fire is really up. He says, so we were a tough opponent that day. And uh, they were tough, but I think we got people who were just a little young. We made some mistakes. Uh, but we let the NFL know that the NFL could play uh, in their league and their division and be competitive. So with the Raiders, how did the team change when John Madden took over as coach? Well, we had everybody in place, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, when you look at our offensive line, I had Jim Otto, Art Schell, and, and, and Gene up, uh, up front, and uh, it didn't change much. We were pretty well in place. Uh, we played aggressive. Uh, you know, and Al Davis uh, would approach me all the time, and he said, Daryl, the, the most important statistic that you have is interceptions and fumbles. The team with the best turnover ratio wins uh, 93% of the time, and that's true in today's game. And so we concentrated not turning the ball over, not trying to fumble, and not trying to throw interceptions. And Al's philosophy was uh, to complete one out of three passes for 15 yards versus three five-yarders. And, uh, you know, as a quarterback, I didn't care if I threw three five-yarders as long as I got the first down. But uh, I had the receivers and, and, and uh, a line that give me the protection that I could throw the ball deep and I had an arm strong enough that I could turn the ball over and, and my receivers would go get it. And, you know, Al used to preach to me all the time, and, and John, that um, you only want to make eight or nine big plays a game. And uh, the rest of the time you want to control the clock. Make eight, those eight or nine big plays make them uh, touchdowns or field goals or a combination there or, or just field position. He says, we'll win our, our, our championships and stuff with defense. And our special teams will, will play into that too, uh, putting you out of trouble uh, when you got it at, at the wrong end of the field. And that's what we did. We had uh, the talent. We had um, uh, the ability to uh, to score when we needed to. And, uh, it was it was an exciting time. It really was. And like you said, it helped to have Fred Blitnikoff and the talent you had, Billy Cannon in Super Bowl two. Yeah, I did. Uh, we we had we played you know, the Green Bay Packers were tough. They put a lot of pressure on us, and they they got in my face a lot. They got the uh, penetration that they wanted, but we played them really really competitive uh, for the first half. Uh, I made a mistake in the second half and threw uh, a pick for an inter- interception, and um, I think we fumbled a punt and stuff and gave them field pos- uh, possession for another score and stuff. But all in all, we walked away from the news that we got beat, but I, I walked away and said, gee, w- w- we eliminate the errors and, and, and execute just a little better. We're competitive, and we would have had a chance. And so... That fired us up for, for the following years, and we were able to still keep our winning ways. You get two MVPs, 
you were a three-time AFL champion. How are you not in the Hall of Fame? I, I don't know. I um, I just uh, I don't know. You know, I David. Growing up, my idol was Otto Graham. In, in grade school, I wanted to be just like Otto Graham. And I had a, a person call me recently and say, Daryl, that you want to let you know if you take any quarterbacks to, in, in the game's history for the first 70 starts, you have the best winning percentage of any quarterback that there is. And if you take 75 games, the first 75 games that you ever started, Otto Graham's number one, and I'm number two. And I don't know how ironic that is, but, uh, you know, that's uh, it's special to me, and I assume that's all true. Uh, I have not gone back and looked at the stats and stuff, but, you know, if someday I get an opportunity to get voted in the Hall of Fame, that would be great. If not, I played with a lot of guys that are in that Hall of Fame, and, and you know, I had a passion for the game of football, and I still do. You know, I love the game. Um, I love playing uh, at the professional level. And I knew when I went into the game, I was going to get my pants dirty and get knocked around like everybody else. But it was all about us and we. It was never about I or me. And that's what made the Raiders so special. We didn't care who won the game, who lost the game. Uh, we didn't lose. We didn't care if the special teams would make the big play, defense make the big play, or the offense. But it's us and we, and that's all the way we, we approached it. And David, we, and you got to remember, we went to camp July 10th, and we broke training camp the first week in September. And we would have two days, and uh, it would hit in the morning and hit in the afternoon, where the pads is every practice. And uh, that's changed considerably now, but no one complained about that. We knew that we had to do that. We were in shape. Uh, we were actually happy to see the season start because we knew we only had one practice a day and you're only going to be on the field an hour. So uh, um, that's that's the way we all started, and that's what we fell in love with. L. Davis must have loved you because with that winning percentage and his philosophy, just win, baby, you did it for him. Well, yeah, we, we had success, and, and um, um, Al was a, a, a different individual because Al knew the game of football and from an owner's standpoint. Al coached the game. Uh, he was under study uh, of Sid Gilman, out of, uh, who I think is probably the, the best football mind ever uh, in all of football. And... Um, he learned how to use the different formations. That's like the old AFL. We hurt the, the, the NFL because we use the, 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 the spread the field, keep it wider and longer, and we put two wide receivers over on the same side and take our tight end, put on the opposite side, and even if you had a tight end had speed or so, you could flex him out. So you utilize the entire field, and that's what the old AFL brought to uh, then the, the old NFL and force them to adjust their defenses and stuff. But uh, Al brought all that in and uh, uh, made, made the Raiders special, made them really exciting to watch. Uh, we could score some points, uh, and then we could play tough, too, when we had to. So uh, those were just exciting times for all of us. Um, and so I just felt so fortunate to be a part of that. It seems like Al Davis took care of his former players, that they all loved him because, I mean, once you're a Raider, you were a Raider for life. That's right. We just had a, a, a reunion, a Raider reunion. We all went up to uh, Napa uh, to see uh, a practice. And it's like we all got together, and it's like we never leave. It's just like we're still in training camp, and we start telling stories, and and about the old days and what we did and how we trained and how we got ready and played. And, uh, you know, it, it was special. You know, it's, uh, it's it's just a family atmosphere, and that's what we are. We consider ourselves family, and uh, no one from the outside don't ever try to, to break that up because it's not going to happen. 
Is there any guy tougher than Jim Otto? I saw him at the Hall of Fame last year. He gets he gets out of the bus. He's in the wheelchair. Yep. Jim is and with no with, with I think he had both legs amputated and he just he just he has a smile on his face and he just likes everybody. Jim Otto was the greatest center that I think that's ever played the game, period. He's one of the toughest individuals that uh, I had the chance to play with. And Jim, you, you come back in the huddle, and he looked like he was hurt and couldn't even stand up. And I said, Jim, you, you need some help. Want me to call timeout? And I'll just call a play. Boom, back. He'd go back to last room, and boom, he'd come out and pop a big tackle or something and just never quit. He didn't know what the word quit meant. And, you know, but that's, that's the leadership that he brought to our offensive line, and everybody played the same way. And uh, uh, he was a special individual. He said he fell out of his wheelchair in a hotel room a couple of years ago, knocked his head, got right back up. He goes, I probably had a concussion, but I was ready to go. <laughs> that's, that's Jim. He's just that way. He's, he's still that way. And uh, I guess deep down, we all feel like we can still go out there and play and, 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 and do what we did years ago. But you know, in reality, that's not the case. You had those six touchdown passes in the first half, a record that just been matched one time by Aaron Rodgers last year. Are you surprised that record's held up? Well, you know, you, 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 you don't know how many passes you're, you're completing. You know, you're having a good first half and all. And I remember, I think that game I had uh, another pass went out on the one-yard line. Uh, Drew, Bru- uh, Drew uh, Brees caught it and uh, um, just lost track to where he was and stepped out. So it could have been seven, and uh, but those stats they just come. You don't really count on them. I never, uh, I never worried about pass completion. Uh, if you're behind, you had to catch up. Um, Al's philosophy: the only question anyone ever asks is, uh, David, did you win? They never ask you, did you lose? Or did you win? And they just, yes, we won. Not how many yards you got, how many passes you completed, because you win or lose as a team. And that's what made the Raiders special. And, and I think uh, I see a lot of that coming back. I see that in Jack Del Rio, his approach uh, to the game right now. And I saw a lot of us when we in training camp uh, last week and uh, with Derek Carr there. And, you know, they added some real speed on the outside. You got uh, Cooper uh, and Crabtree on the outside. That that makes any quarterback's heart throb there because you're going to be explosive. So uh, if they can stay healthy, if they can play great defense, then they're going to be uh, competitive, and that's what we need. I think, David, it's been a long time since we've had a winning season. I think you're probably going to have to go back to 2002 or three or so before the last time we had a winning season. So um, I think we're going to have a special year, though. It looks it looks really good on paper anyway. And it helps me have two Hall of Fame receivers in 2002 with uh, Tim Brown and Jerry Rice. Well, yeah. That, anytime you have great receivers, it is special. And, and the Raiders have always had that. And, you know, having special athletes that you can build – around and, and you know but um what you look at number one uh championships are one on defense and that's in the history of the nfl the best defensive teams go to the playoffs and the super bowls every year and uh the raiders know that that's what they're looking at right now uh but they also have some scoring power is going to be explosive a young quarterback that we can keep him healthy uh and keep his mistakes to a minimum are going to be really competitive, and I think should be in, in, in every game. And I think their kicking game is outstanding. So uh, I was impressed. I was all fired up uh, about the Raiders this year and what I think that they can do this year. Who was the toughest defense you went up against when you played? Oh, probably the fearsome foursome with the Rams back then. Green Bay uh, fell into that category. Uh, um, that would probably be that the Vikings. I played the Vikings when they 
were as tough as you, you could get that, that front um, seven really could put some heat on you and, and stuff. And so I was fortunate to have competed against a lot of those guys and, you know, in some cases hold their own. So um, they were special teams, though. What about the Steelers? And the Dallas have... Cowboys, too. The Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, um, they could bring it, too. So, you know, we face some pretty good teams uh, in our heyday. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned those teams, and also the Steelers' defense wasn't too shabby, either. <laughs> well, that's right. That's why we were always in, in every game, and we, we, we tried it, uh, to be as competitive as we, we, we could. But I think what made... Our Raider team so special was the guys, uh, the players, because it was all about the team. It was all about us and we. There was never any individuals. Nobody uh, um, w- was not satisfied if he didn't get enough balls or enough yards or whatever because all we looked at that record did we win. And that, that's all that really mattered to us. There was one player that got away from L. Davis, who I think if he would have got him, you would have won a couple Super Bowls, and I think you would have loved to have him, was Lance Allworth. It seemed like L. Davis <laughs> wanted that guy so bad. Bambi was, was without a doubt the best. Uh, I played a couple all-star games with him, and I had a chance to throw to him, and he was as smooth a receiver and as graceful as I think there ever has been, and uh, uh, it, was, it was really a pleasure uh, to, to play with him, and so I got a taste of it a little bit, um, but yeah, if, if the Raiders would have had another individual like him, we probably would have been, been a little more successful. 